Hello, I'm Louisa Moore. I'd like to talk just for a few minutes about my new uh, European Research Council uh, research project, um, Algorithmic Societies, where I'm looking at ethical life in the machine learning age and trying to understand and respond to the consequences of machine learning for contemporary society. And I suppose that at the root of what I'm, I'm doing is, is to really think about how now the life chances of people are so intimately connected to the, the attributes and the clusters that algorithms have learned from their exposure to the data of unknown others. So in some ways, the, the ethics questions are very old ethics questions and they're about the relationships we have with ourselves and with others. And it's just that this is, in a sense, newly mediated through the lens of, of machine learning practices. And I think, you know, very recently we've seen some of these consequences coming into the public domain in new ways. So in the UK, the, this summer in 2020, it was proposed that the um, the impact of COVID on, on young people meant that their exam results would need to be inferred by an algorithm. This was not a machine learning algorithm. This was a very basic statistical algorithm. But nonetheless, the result of that process was marches in the streets by young people carrying placards that read, you know, fuck the algorithm. So the sense of injustice and the sense that somehow the futures of young people had been inferred, not from their past data even actually, but from the clusters of attributes of other people unknown to them. And that even we might say that these data do not quite belong to uh, individuals in the way that we might think about data subjects having particular rights in terms of data and data protection. So I want to propose that there's a different way of looking at this, you know, that we've seen a very widespread public debate, I think, and, and lots of scholarly attention given to what's very often just called AI ethics. And I think that you know, for me, this is all about the search somehow for ethical codes of conduct or codes of practice for algorithmic decisions to to try to excise the bias or to address the unfairness that might be thought to reside within the algorithm itself. And, and in a sense, I think that that discussion means that we tend to think about uh, machine learning as having some good uses and some bad uses, you know, so good when it's looking for um, enhancing medical imaging or for detecting tumours and bad perhaps when it's being used in the theatre of war or, or for autonomous weaponry. But I want to try to shift that debate on and to say, well, it's not so much a question of the good and the bad of machine learning algorithms. Instead, we need to think about how machine learning is, is changing our our understandings of what good and bad actually mean in a society. So if we have criminal justice outcomes for individuals that are rather like the A-level examinations are related to the clusters of past attributes that those models have learned from other um, past experiences in the criminal justice system, this is one of the very many ways that we see so much inequality in injustice and racism. In, in some of the examples we're seeing at the moment in relation to machine learning. So with this project, the, the intention was really to try to study parts of our lives that are not often studied together. So to think about different domains of machine learning and to think about them in parallel. So one of my long-standing interests, which is in biometrics, I'm going to be thinking about what happens to biometrics with machine learning. So where this is not just any longer a matter of one to one recognition or identification of an individual, but where the biometric as one element of a data input to a machine learning algorithm becomes associated with all kinds of um, behavioural characteristics or propensities to behave in a certain way. So I want to think about how biometrics are being transformed in relation to machine learning in society. But I want to think about that alongside a study of biomedical object recognition, because very often it's in areas of biomedicine that the same sorts of um, uh, convolutional neural networks that you would see at work in, say, facial recognition are being used in ways that we might often say as a society are very 
could very good and very beneficial. So the capacity to detect particular sorts of um, uh, anomalies in, in medical scans and images, for example. So I want to look at in my case studies, the way that different sorts of domains of our lives are being entangled with machine learning processes. So just to sort of try to map out now some of the early questions and some of the, um, the questions I'm going to be asking, and, and these really uh, work around recognition, attribution and inference. So in terms of a first port of call for thinking about, well, what are the ethics areas you're interested in? It's about how machine learning practices are reconfiguring our social and political modes of recognising, attributing and inferring. So just thinking about recognition, I think it's an area that has reached the press in terms of facial recognition and that rightly so much focus and attention has been on facial recognition, has been on some of the consequences of public spaces being monitored using facial recognition algorithms that are um, using databases of, of, of um, images of, of individuals. And I think as it was perhaps as a result of that focus on facial recognition, that in some ways what we mean by recognising has become limited to the recognising of individuals. But actually, the, the, the particular form that that recognising is taking extends significantly beyond the realms of facial recognition. And though there are specific software companies now who are ceasing the use of facial recognition and there are particular cities around the world that are banning the use of facial recognition. In my study, I want to be able to show that the, the machine learning mode of recognising continues to extend and intensify because it's, it significantly exceeds the simple one-to-one -one matches of individual spaces to a particular watch list. This is a much more significant form of recognising, which is really about who, which individuals, which groups in society have a recognisable claim in the world so this might be um, the capacity to assemble, to organise, to make a political claim. Yes, in part, that's about the governing that happens through the recognition of individuals in a crowd. But the form of recognition is a machine learning modality of recognising that I want to do more work on to understand how are people, objects and things recognised using machine learning techniques and what are the consequences for how we think about our ethical lives with others in our society. And then attribution is something which I've been working on for longer. I, I read my book Cloud Ethics in part thinking about the attribute. But in this project, I want to try to trace more closely how the attribute as it is understood in computer science may be redefining what we think of as attributes in terms of our society, in terms of our forms of government um, and in terms of our relationships with others in, in, in our societies. So to be clear about that, the attribute in computer science is much more uh, associated with a feature or with the idea of a variable. So what are the variables in this data set? What are the attributes of this cluster of data? And what I'm interested in in this element of the project is to what extent that computer science understanding of the attribute is redefining what we think of when we think about the qualities or the characteristics of a person or of a group of people or a community, a society. So how and to what extent are models that think about attributes as clusters actually reshaping, for example, how governments govern their populations. And I think in this era of, of, of COVID, we're seeing that intensify because of the attention to particular attributes in terms of behaviours. So governing attributes as a means of intervening in the behaviours of individuals and, and communities. And I suppose my, my concern there in terms of thinking about, well, what does that mean for us? Um, as a kind of set of ethical concerns is what sorts of uh, different understandings of qualities or characteristics are being undermined. And of course, 
you know, we only have to think of in the UK context, the 2010 Equality Act and the idea of a protected characteristic to think about the what could really be very significant there that, you know, the consequences of reinterpreting a characteristic as an attribute or as a shared set of attributes. So that's something I'm really looking forward to and I'm going to be looking at it in relation to, again, different domains. So consumer micro targeting, um, but also policing and criminal justice targeting to think again, to sort of challenge myself, I suppose, to think about how across domains that might conventionally be thought of as deploying these techniques for the good or for the bad, that to sort of look at the links and correlations across those different domains. And then finally, inference. And I, you know, I think this did really come to the fore in certainly in UK public debates in 2020, that there was something more at stake for the for the young people in the UK to have their exam grades inferred. So these are called calculated grades, but I think what was really at stake was that inferences about their potential were being made on the basis of a kind of standard distribution of grades that they had to fit somewhere along that standard uh, distribution. And so I think it was quite stark in some ways that things I've been working on for a long time where, where the idea that the individual cannot ever really fully withdraw from those things. So to protect one's data, to reject particular sorts of platforms, to not be present in social media, that all of those measures are never somehow quite adequate to what it would mean to resist being governed through kind of these calculative techniques. And I think because of this, um, this inferred future reaching the forefront of public debates, even in our general discussions, we started to see people talking about the unfairness of someone else's grade being awarded to somebody. And I think that was really interesting because that did get at something I've been looking at for quite a long time, which is that this is not only about the individual's data, it's about the inferences drawn from its relations to the data of others. And so with this project, I'm going to be experimenting more with what it would mean to think about the pathways of inference and what happens along that pathway. How are other alternative futures written out or filtered out by machine learning algorithms to output a particular inferred future. And in, in my book, I describe that as the, the traces of the rejected alternative. So that there are rejected alternatives in every operation of machine learning. And how do we recover those moments of a rejected alternative and say, well, this could have been an alternative future for this person. So so how did it get filtered out and how was it not present in the final outcome? And is it possible for us to reopen some of the closures that happen along that pathway? So just to just to conclude a couple of reflections in terms of what I hope to get out of this project, I hope to be able to kind of confound myself a little and to be more experimental in the work that I'm doing. So um, along the way, I hope to appoint um, three uh, uh, postdoctoral research assistants. And among those, I would like there to be people who have a background in computer science, a background in the humanities, art and literature, for us to be able to, to try to draw in the broadest possible way on um, different approaches to how we can think about these problems. So not only to I guess engage in the in the I think quite frustrating discussions that can take place about where is the rightful place for the ethical discussion you know is it in the training of computer scientists is it in the the you know encouraging um, regulatory or juridical approaches that allow for some redress to algorithmic decisions so I hope that we will build a team uh, able to think about these things together in ways that that uh, that challenge and cut across some of the, the more, um, I guess, embedded ways of thinking about the problem. So I'm really excited to start and um, hoping to be able to post more videos as we go to just, I, I guess, explain my thinking. This is new to me to just to just post short videos explaining my thinking as I go. But I think it will be 
a useful exercise and I hope you'll enjoy it along the way. Thank you.